Rocky Cash and Lori Kilmartin. It's happening, Lori. I don't know Karen. why I'm tired like it's a Sunday night, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> it has Sunday night energy. We're both exhausted. Uh, I have to right. wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Are you leaving again? Yeah, I got home last night and uh, right. I am leaving. I was home today. My son and I saw a uh, hai, haiku. Haiku. It's an anime um, about uh, a volleyball match. It's great. And um, <laughs> there could be an an. There's there's whatever it's say. It's an anime about, and then the entire world opens up because it could literally totally. be about anything. <laughs> I love sports anime. Oh my god, Blue Lock is a soccer one. They're so good. And um, oh, good. Anyway, uh. So yeah, I'm just sort of like, uh, you know, been re- going, go, 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 connecting a little bit, uh, going fly- t- flying very early to Portland tomorrow, and then I have um, I don't know two hours to kill with my luggage, <laughs> and what? then I'm doing a, a two p.m. like local afternoon show. That oh, just okay. Got me. Just a good okay. got me, and then um, and then I can check in my hotel and. Uh, do my show at Helium that night, tonight, the the day this is dropping. This very, if, yeah. If you're in Portland, very night. please come to the show. I'd love to come to the show. <laughs> and then, uh, Oregon. then I, then I will be checking out of that hotel in the morning and, uh, having hours to kill with my luggage and checking into a different Portland hotel for Livewire. Oh. Yes. And right. then, uh, uh, and then, but I can sleep all, you know, till 11 a.m. I'm assuming on uh, Thursday morning. And then if I have a 5 a.m. flight to Milwaukee on Friday morning. Right. But I'll get Friday in morning. Two, and uh, I'll have some hours to just nap and, you know, uh, get my shit together. And, uh, then uh, hopefully I'll just have some really uh, hella fun shows at the laughing. That's cool. I'm, uh, I'm here until. Friday when I fly to uh, Minneapolis and in Minneapolis, I'm going to drive up to Hayward, Wisconsin, Mm -hmm. which is a, I believe a two and a half, three hour drive. And I'm staying, there was some talk I've been working on what, where the, the hotel business, but I'm doing a North star. If you are anywhere near Hayward, Wisconsin on Saturday, uh, the eighth, I believe it is. Um, I mm-hmm. me- Mary Mac hosts a thing called the North Star Meat Raffle, and uh, it's a variety show. And this one's being filmed because I think she's uh, gonna put it out somewhere. And I'm gonna do five minutes TV clean. Uh, I've I was like, I think I might do the the new driving stuff. That's TV clean, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Does that feel solid? Yeah, I gotta. Yeah. I I have to do a clean set on LifeWire, so I might oh, yeah. just do some stuff from Cisco Greek Slut. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I have no idea. Are you I, doing ten? I got. I'll I'll deal with that on Wednesday night after my helium set. I can only take these things one day at a time. <laughs> right on. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Uh. I booked shows in uh, Luxembourg. What? Yes. You go back to the homeland. When are you going? Uh, At the moment, it's it's July 6th and 7th. So I'll probably leave uh, from Boston because I'm working Mm -hmm. in Boston that weekend before. And then um, uh, I may be doing shows in Paris as well. And I'm putting, I'm just like trying to put it out there. Like I'm acting like everything was in, you know, (laughs) driving range. But when you look at Europe, it it feels like New England. All these countries seem so small compared. It's not, you know, I don't know. I, I could be setting myself up to drive basically across Texas. Um, um. You know what I mean? <laughs> but what I would love I to do, do uh, love to do shows in Paris. That would be incredible. Uh, I would love to do shows I in Germany. One. Germany is mm-hmm. on the uh, other side of Luxembourg. And right. So I kind of want to also, because the, the real reason, the first reason I booked this is like, uh, I want to finish this pilot and there's some experiences I'm making up that I need to f- see, like, are these real? Would this really happen? What would it feel like to be an American here? Am I, you know, all the things that I'm sort of imagining. So I just kind of want to put myself there. So if nice. I broke even, it would be, 
the, uh, the greatest miracle oh, since so um, uh, <laughs> the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which didn't uh, happen. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Um, I know. Yeah, I it mean, seems unlikely. Yes. But did you? When did you book it? Did you just book it? Have like you about been a week and a half it? ago. It was a little wobbly. Did you, but it's, yeah. Did you talk to Aaron Crouch about Germany at all? Not yet. I haven't done. No. I okay. As I said, I haven't even figured out my live wire set, which is in two days. So <laughs> just let me finish. <laughs> let me get home from Milwaukee, and then I will all eyes. Right. I will just all, completely. I almost said all all eyes. I'm like, wait, where would I grab that from? Okay, never mind. I will focus completely on this Europe trip and what logistically makes sense. Somebody posted, somebody translated one of my clips in Italian, like they, and then they, he emailed, he DM'd me and said, it's, it's real big in Italy right now. <laughs> I'm like, are there any gigs in Italy? They're mostly open mics. I'm like, well, I can't go all the way to Italy for open mics, but um no. But I mean, good. I, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to spend the whole month there because it will cost so much money. Um, but uh, it would be cool to do shows in Germany. Yeah, yeah, it'd too. be cool to. Uh, I I've been wanting to. Uh, I've been. I haven't much like yourself. I haven't done anything about it. But there is a game. The biggest board game convention in the world is in Essen, Germany. All oh, right. And it is in November and. I about a month and a half ago was going to go to that and book stuff around it. And I have now booked November so I cannot go. Oh, so, uh, there you go. I'm doing Vermont, Toronto, Portland, Maine, uh, and a bunch of other Pittsburgh and yeah. Did you book it yourself? Yeah. What's the gig in Portland, Maine? Is it a weekend? It is a weekend. I'll tell you how, uh, I'll tell you all okay. about it. It's called okay. Empire Comedy Club. Cool. And um, I'm sure they would love you. I and would love it too. Yeah. So um, Jackie, so hopefully I it works out. No clubs that don't love me. So uh, <laughs> any, any new loves, please DM me. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Um, yeah, I have done, I don't feel like I've done a lot of sets. Uh, yeah, I'm about to go on, I'm doing this thing in, in Hayward, Wisconsin. And then I'm then like two days, three days later, I'm doing a 45 in Eau Claire in a mm-hmm. bar, like old school nineties. I love it. And I love then, it. except for, I think Mick's done it, Mary, Mary Mack's done it. And, um, which means that it can be done. Like they, they do have an appreciation level. Yeah. Um, cause she's so great, but it, it doesn't. And then, and then I'm doing a don't tell in Milwaukee on Friday uh-huh. and I'm doing a, a festival in Madison on Saturday and then I'm coming back on Sunday. I love it. That's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll both be coming back on Sunday. The 16th. Oh, wait, you're, you're home this weekend. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, the, right. This okay. weekend I'm home. I think you're home next weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah your son of... came over and played a board game. I love it. So tell me about it. He's, he told me four words. It's like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> like, oh, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for all the adjectives. I love it. Thank you. Right. Uh, I, and I saw that you threw some cash at me, which is not what friends do, but thank no, you very much. Gas. You, cause you had to no. pick him up and I know you <laughs> fed him and I know he ate a hundred dollars worth of food. So, right. Um, it was, no, it's, it's all, gas. it's all good. Um, yeah, it's usually, it's not done is what I'm telling Jackie, you, uh, but you do gas, whatever you want to do. <laughs> it's gas reimbursement. It's, uh, well, how do you know that he didn't give me grass? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> least, you're I happy to know that nobody asked for ass. I so. was about to say, I hope he didn't give you ass, but, um, uh, right. So, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, he ate uh, some Zanku chicken and then he ate uh, a Cuban sandwich. So that's what he ate. All right. He did not win. Uh, we played uh, Clank, the extended, uh, uh, with the extension on it so that uh, five could play. It was yeah. Five of us. Yeah. And uh, it means you get a character. And he got a kind of a complicated character. I should have switched with him, but I had never played my character and I didn't realize that my character is one of the ones that wins. Uh, so I, for the first time ever, won the game Clank. So good for me. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. So we had a good time. It was about three or four hours. And um, then Andy drove him home. And that was uh, that. Was that. And our, our so nephew much. was visiting. So of course. Our nephew was visiting from Alaska. Yeah. And, uh, oh my God, I had the biggest drama with Hilton. It is, okay, there's a Hampton Inn. And you know that I love a Hampton Inn. Jackie, I don't mean a bad I'm here for hotel drama. And if our audience doesn't want to hear it, then you are not our audience. <laughs> Welcome to Jackie and Lori and Hotel Drama. It's a new segment. <laughs> and uh, so I will tell you this, is that, so I checked him in. And um, the guy who checked him checked us in, I tried to get him in early because he, because his flight was early. And it, the guy who checked him in was like, I'm going to do you right. You're gold. This is going to be amazing. And I'm like, I think I'm diamond, but whatever. <laughs> and, uh, but is I was diamond like, just, higher than gold. Yes. Oh uh, yeah. And, um, you'll, you'll see at the Hilton, it just says parking for diamond members only. Nobody checks. Just going to let yeah. you in on something. You can, you can be silver. You can I not even be. There. In, yeah. <laughs> so, um, he gets in. The guy gets him in. It's fine. It doesn't show up in my app. So I'm not getting credit for these days. Oh, that's not good. And that is not good. And, um, and then the, I, I pick him up the next morning. He, Andy drives him back and forth, but the next morning, He's like, hey, they came into my morning at 8 a.m. And we're like, nobody's supposed to be in this room. Why are you in this room? And he's like, because I have keys to this room. I have keys to this room. I'm And That's I here's my ID. Yeah. So they were like, we have this room is unoccupied. He was like, well, here's the keys with the guy wrote the number on it and the keys work. And they're like, and so he had the, the manager came upstairs. What? And he was like, you're not supposed to be. And he was like. He was like, again, and the guy goes, well, you can stay here. Yeah, yeah, he can, since I was paying for it. Hi. Yeah. And uh, and then I was like, you didn't put the do not disturb on the door? Which He was like, I don't even know where that is, Jackie. <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, learn to travel. Uh, so, and then he, got, he checked out yesterday, and I got the receipt, and they had charged me almost $600 in a no-show fee. Oh, what? I know. There was been some sort of, so I called Hilton and I was like, hey, I'm not getting my, my, and so I didn't get credit for the, the, the stays or the points. And, um, and I've been charged an extra $600 or something. And Andy comes over at one point. He's like, tag team, tag team. Let me just take over. We just take over for you. Oh, that's, and, uh, <laughs> that's what I need. I need someone to take over during a customer yeah, service just, call. That's and, when I wanted a boyfriend. And then he resolved that issue. That issue was then resolved it, to some extent. I did not get the stays. She gave me points instead. And I was like, well, now I have to figure out how to, you know. Who who well who got who got credit for the stay then? Um nobody. They said, Well, did you stay in that room as well? And I was like, no, my nephew stayed in that room. And they're like, well, if you don't stay in the room, you don't get the stays. But you will get That's the Hilton Honors true. points. I know. It is not true. It's not true at all. Uh, club owners take the take the points yeah. frequently. And, right. The, they get the stays. They get the points. They get all yeah. of it. Let's take a break. Already? Well, it's it, it'll be an early break, and then we'll take a very late break, and then it'll sort of make Kyle's life slightly better. Okay. Because yeah. I've made it slightly harder. True. I don't know what happened, by the way. Um, are we back? Yeah, I think we're back. Yeah. Oh, I was at uh, excuse me, Burlington. Oh, right. This weekend. It was a lot of fun. That town's uh, the best. It is, and I kind of bummed that I didn't just. I want to stay over a couple extra days next time, and just and just kind of kind of pretend to live. Pretend there. to be in Vermont. It's one of those. Yeah. Yeah. I had That's one. Got a good vibe. Okay, so I had to tra travel on Friday, right? And then um, I had a good meal at August first, which is that cafe down the street, down Man Main Street. Right. Great meal, actually, on Sunday morning, and then uh, walked around, and uh, it was nice. It was just, you know, I was so I got it all in. I did. I did the waterfront. I visited yep. that ridiculous store at april cornell that has oh right i have an april cornell uh 
corduroy jacket and bag matching jacket and bag because there used to be a brick and mortar april cornell in the upper west side and my friend jenny bergman is like it's gonna be a staple it's a Uh it's a basic staple of and she's right i've had it for 20 years and have you ever worn or used it i wear it all the time i wear it's autumnal Lauren. it's autumnal It's sort well, of in a burnt orange corduroy. Oh, well, that sounds it has a perfect. very Vermont April Cornell vibe to it. Yes, <laughs> I want to live in Vermont and change my name to April Cornell and <laughs> just wear those kind of flowery things. It just uh, it it just you know, it's it's, it's why Bernie Sanders, it's why Bernie Sanders thinks all black people have PhDs because almost all of the black people <laughs> in Burlington have PhDs. Um, it's a yeah. very white state. Yes, it is. It's, it's a it pile is. of whitey magoos. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And the crowds were really fun. There were people there for the rhubarb festival. They came from out of state. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just say? What did I just say? They managed to sneak in my show in addition to the festival. So I was thrilled about that. We used to eat rhubarb. I, I don't know. Maybe rhubarb is. Uh, uh, we used to eat rhubarb when I was a kid because it was, um, it was like an after school snack. If you picked a bunch of it, uh huh, and you were starving after school, you would try to eat it, but it was so sour and not and so tart. Because if you eat raw rhubarb, here's what you do: you snap it off, you bring it home, you get yourself a bowl of sugar, and then it's a fun dip. That's how oh. Fun Dip was created. Uh, rhubarb and sugar. So, really? Yeah. Oh, That's what it's that. based on. Yeah. Um, that that sounds like a wonderful times from your wild Wisconsin upbringing. I, I was raised in the Appalachians in the 1930s. It's uh, my Leave it to Beaver upbringing, <laughs> which isn't per- wasn't particularly Leave it to Beaver-ish. But if you take things out of context, it has a real Leave it to Beaver kind of vibe. Was it leave it to Darla, your older sister? <laughs> <laughs> leave it to Darla and Phil <laughs> to make sure that I was fed and clothed and went to school. Yes. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact. Um, yeah, so it was, it was really fun. And, uh, just, That's cool. It went by too quickly. And I'm like, oh, why? why? In, you know? in, in the Vermont run that I'm doing in November, it's all attached. So I'm doing Toronto. And then I'm doing. I Vermont, I think, or Pittsburgh, and then Vermont, and then Portland. Are so there's a that? bunch of days off. Right. Off. So are you doing the comedy bar in Toronto? No, I'm doing what? a theater outside of Toronto at Hamilton. Oh, nice. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And um. And that, and then I'm going to try to visit my buddy Joe Wilson, who did the Dork Forest with me the first three years. Mm-hmm. who has the cancer and is mm-hmm. living in overtime. So mm-hmm. hoping to, hoping to make that a, a, a is thing. he, is he in Albany? He's I in forget. Albany. Okay. He's, yeah. yeah. Which, uh, you know, if I was, uh, I still have the, the, the business card of the manager of the Albany funny bone who, who, when I did it with Maria said, if you ever want to do a Wednesday, <laughs> I was like, uh, oh in God. Albany, when am I going to be in, but uh, it might happen. You might this be. might be the time. <laughs> this might be the time when I'm in Albany on a Wednesday. But Paul Kozlowski also lives up up northern New York, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rontowski, so, sort of by Utica, mm-hmm. where Rontowski was living for a couple of years. And uh, so I might be able to pick up a couple of extra, you know, just one-nighters, maybe. That'll yeah, pay for I a mean, hotel or something. I think there's a, yeah, possibly a... Uh... I don't know. Does Ross Bennett lives in either Syracuse, I think, and uh, although he does mostly cruise stuff, but there's like little gigs here and there. There's you know a smaller oh. comedy scene. Do you know what happened with my the cruise ship drama? Tell me. So I was supposed to go on the cruise ship as of the sixteenth, uh, and they kept sending me the stuff, and it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, didn't make any sense. So I asked my agent, I was like, could you please, Is this, are they real? He was like, remember, this is that weird gig where they made you sign a lot of things. And then the flight, they wanted to put you on an airplane that you don't like. And I was like, oh, 
he said, let me talk to him. Let me see what, what can be handled. And he finally, it took back and forth, back and forth, days and days. And um, <clears throat> we talked on the phone and he goes, all right, I think we've organized it that you're not going to do this one chain of, of, uh, of t- cruise ships because they insist on some nonsense I don't want to do, like fly spirit or some fucking thing. Anyway, but um, what they did was, so they're, they're going to do a blanket, normal contract, and then just sort of an agreement. And he goes, she was worried that you were going to, she said you had to promise not to approach the cruise line directly to book directly. And there was a pause. And then we both laughed and laughed. Uh, I don't want any part of me trying to book a cruise ship directly. Right. I mean, but remember when people say that it usually means they're making three times the money you're making. Right. That's what it always means. It always means that you're getting screwed and they don't want you to know. And they don't want you to, have Somehow it and... that number will slip out what the budget for the actual gig is yes. right now i'm getting you know 12 dollars, and they're getting 12 grand and right. um and i was like if i do these gigs it's because i want to fill the weeks or i want to try it once and right. see if it's something i even like right right it's right. not it's certainly not going to be i'm not going to start a business <laughs> right Ah, too funny. Anyway, so that was that was that drama. Other than I, that, I mean, yeah, uh, you, you're kind of halfway there with your album with staycation. I mean, vacation, vacations, oh, vacation, sure. vacation. I mean, I can see her concerns now. The more I think about <laughs> it, the more I realize you're setting yourself up for an empire. Right. I also did a, a table reading of um a body horror, Kyle. A body Ooh. horror play, a play that was supposedly a horror, it's to be a horror play or a horror film, but it was just a table read of it uh, in front of an audience Yeah, at o- over at the Titmouse uh, Theater. Remember, I think I was telling you about it last week. Yeah. And um, it was fun. Kate Minucci was in it. Wow. Well. And uh, we played sort of like the Greek chorus. Kate played a different part, but me and these two other women were like heckle, jekyll, and whatever a third would be. And uh, but like a Greek chorus of of sort of quips. And it was uh, it was very fun. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had okay. So I've decided uh, maybe I'll cut up. Uh, you know, when I did, when I taped my album corset, that is not getting any airplay on Sirius and never <laughs> will because of spoken giants and their right. association, right? That's correct. Never. I mean, maybe one or two tracks. It's, it's just like unbelievable. So uh, I thought, well, I have video from each set, but it's all, it's all shot in an angle. Do you? Not, yes. But it, again, they're all shot from like, you know, one side or another side. It's not. And I thought, maybe I'll just cut up all the jokes separately and and grab them from different shows. And maybe there's a way I can like take five minutes, like make a special that's all different angles of me at the San Francisco punchline, you know, I mean, people that are sitting in the audience, that's from, from that point of view, that's what they see. So it's not, it's not unwatchable or anything. It's just nothing's front face. Nothing's like centered. So it's either from the left or the right and just throw it up on YouTube because those jokes are being unheard or unlistened to. I say, yeah, I say you cut them, you cut them out per joke and just use them, use them as reels. I am doing that. I started doing that. And that's um, great. But then just put a longer one up on YouTube. I don't know that longer goes on YouTube. Longer I I think does okay on TikTok. No, I don't think so. Okay. So so Sunday, I went to the cellar, right? And oh, uh, oh my God, that's right! Abomination, right? Um, no, it, it. I had so I had a so I had a five minute. Okay, I had got no sleep, right? Because I had a very oh, early right. flight. No sleep, and I'm already resentful that I have to even audition, right? And I'm yeah. Tired. Mm-hmm. And then um, there was. I'm not, I'm not saying names. There was commentary on my mask repeated. Oh. 
so that I could tell that it annoyed the person that needed to be liking me, right? Okay. And that, that you know what, that makes me confrontational back. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take it off, especially if you no. tell me you had COVID four or five times and it was no big deal. I'm like, that's when I <laughs> tighten my... <laughs> That's when I tighten it around my face, right? Yeah. So there's already that sort of energy. And, and I'm not used to that, actually, from because most, most clubs are, they don't give a shit, you know, they don't yeah. care. But um, so I had that, that's starting to burn in me a little bit. Right. Tired, resentful. Right. And uh, then I was only doing five minutes. Um, right. Not enough time. I prepare right. like a longer set. And then, so I got up on stage and I'm not in a good place mentally, you know, I'm just like, yeah, no, you're, last, you're, yeah. Last time you're... I was up on stage, I was eight months pregnant. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I see, you know, the silhouettes of the, the people watching, not the audience, the, the people. Yeah. The book. yeah. Right. I'm, I'm just like, and the first show did okay, but I am not connecting with a crowd. I can feel it. I can yeah. feel it. And it doesn't, I don't, you know, I'm not a comic having fun. I'm like right. checking, check this joke, this joke. Also, the jokes have to be, they can't be dark because apparently that's my reputation. And that's the worry. Right? So I'm like, all right, what jokes are light, but still funny, but, 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 and, and it's like not how I want to perform ever. Nope. Nope. So it, you know, the first joke was okay. And then it was like, oh, okay. And things were okay. But I, I could tell from joke one, I'm like, oh, this isn't happening. And I, <sighs> but I, I did not have that confident feeling, you know, right. like I Which was just will like, sometimes save you. Well, sometimes will. I didn't have yeah. it. And I also didn't feel like five minutes was enough time to like, had it been a regular set, it would have been, oh, let me drop these plans and, you yeah. know, try something else but mm -hmm. because i had all these little hoops i had to jump through so it was okay at best it was like a b minus you know right uh, i wish you jokes... had ran the light and then ordered all the food to go <laughs> <laughs> like the jokes you know were strong enough to have get got decent laughs even though i was not participating in the performance <laughs> right um but you know so i was like all right <laughs> what is what it is and it's done and that's fine and then I yeah. went up and I hung out with Ophira for a while and, um, and the other comics and stuff when we were all just talking. And, um, uh, it was good to talk to Ophira, you know, it's, yeah. it's one thing I do miss is like in LA, I'm always like, all right, I want to go home and see myself. But yeah. you know, in New York, it's like, there's no one to see. So I will hang out and talk and stuff like that. If, uh, yeah. if I know anybody or if I'm friends with them. And so it was we, Ophira and I talked for a long time. I will say the got some a little minor gossip which is, uh, probably isn't even gossip i got was that the, there are comics that you know we there's a there's a lot of us that are freaking out about how how much of it's just turned into marketing right mm -hmm. a lot yeah. of us not just right. you and me and not just us on the podcast no no when i was at that, that weekend posts, at the right? stand yeah just had to talk down every comic our age and older right. Right. Off a frickin' ledge about social media. And anyway. even younger. Uh, there's just a whole bunch of us that came up with, you have to be funny first, right? And there's just uh, other comics now, they're, they, you know, and it, also it's because the pandemic, they just started fucking around on TikTok and it worked accidentally. I mean, if I, you know, cool that you backed into it, right? But that's, that's now like the structure of the entire industry now is how many... <laughs> How many tickets can you sell? How many tickets? Right. And that's it. But I did get some gossip about like a big ticket seller who came, who was tickets first in comedy and you know, they, they have family money and that's how let's, they were able to pay for the whole, that's, that's what, the whole gossip. Right. Oh, Do you type the here? name. Yeah. Okay. I'd love to hear, to hear oh, the name of that is um, whatever. This is old school. Old and they're school. very let's nice. message everyone. It's, sure. Okay. sure. That's the worst thing. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. I don't know them. Um, uh, very nice. And so, you know, it, but everyone, it's like... You, you just, it's almost you the nail told. in the coffin. Super nice. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, like when you find out someone's a Nepo baby and you're like, okay, 
that's right, why giant they got bag all, of if money. You're, if you're an actor, right, you see that you're going, okay, so, and I think as comics, you're going to know some of these people have so much fucking money and they're able to create the marketing machine and the comedy later or at simultaneously. And there's a lot of us that are just like opening Canva and making our own fucking reels. It's, right. know, it's buried. They're operating on a different film. And it's hard to there's always remember. been there's always been something though right i mean yeah when i first started out they were just like if you're funny you'll do it and it's true if i can consistently make a room full of people laugh i will always have work it will not necessarily be the biggest money work or the or fame work right but there there will always be stages and there'll always be i'll be able to do it forever yeah. but um but if you go another layer down, it helps if you have a giant bag of money. And in 1985, it helped if you had a swinging dick. And, you know, uh, and sometimes it helps if you are white. And sometimes it helps if you golf. And sometimes it helps if you party. And sometimes it helps if you don't party. And sometimes it helps if you play Magic the Gathering, which is how I got my first bookings at Acme Comedy Company. The booker at Acme Comedy Company played Magic the Gathering, and that's how I learned Magic the Gathering. Oh, I would have resented you so much in your little because <laughs> you wouldn't have been willing. Magic you the might have been willing. Group. I wish um, I had those 1994 uh, cards. I gave them to my nephew. He threw them away. Oh, they're mm. all worth like three grand each now. It'd be oh, like shit. giving it. Yeah, it'd be like giving uh, like. Like a Ty Cobb rookie card. Um, hey, complete lateral. Did you hear that uh, they've combined the stats for the Negro Baseball League and the and the and the White Baseball League? Uh, to and then Ty Cobb is no longer the 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 biggest dude. Yeah. Oh, is it Jackie Robinson? No, it's just uh, some random guy who was in the Negro Players uh, Baseball League, and he hit the baseball is his name more times. Satchel? Satchel. No, no, okay. I, th that's the other famous guy, but none of the. Oh, I mean, he's probably famous to Greg Proops. Greg Proops did a dork <laughs> forest about the Negro Baseball League. Okay, Jesse Thorne just did one about baseball in general, which is why I even I think that's why I got uh I got it showed up on my feed because I was talking about baseball and they're listening. Ah, well, here's the thing. I, I guess after that audition. Right. So I, I hung out and it's, it's a good time talking with everybody. And I was right. like, it's, I let go. It's, I let it go. Okay. What, whatever you want from that club, I had it, you know, when I needed it the most. And it yeah, was fine. That's true. That's true. And, uh, you know, whatever. I, I, I mostly want, when I go to New York and do spots, I want to work shit out. I don't want to have to kill, you know what I mean? Like, it, there's always, even you know it, the, how nice it must be. It is fucking stressful. I mean, uh, yeah. So yeah, I kind of don't want that stress. I just wanted to work. For this. It sounded like a fun, yeah. easy gig, but mm -hmm. that's okay. Uh, but I was like, well, you know, I should have just taken a later flight, slept in on Sunday, had another breakfast in in yep. Vermont. There was a really late flight I could have taken. I, that's what I should have right. done. Instead, mm -hmm. I just was like a series of, I, you know, going out there, I take the red eye, you know, so that always, that always fucks with my sleep. Just the things, a lot of things fucking with my sleep. Right. You know what doesn't fuck with my sleep is when I what? sleep in a normal place, normal hours, and then I get to sleep it out. Then my sleep is not fucked. If I have to get up and you know it's like it's things are interrupted and there's all this drama yeah it's really hard to get it back it takes days yes oh and this is i went so i, I went to new york for a couple of days first right i guess on tuesday tuesday right yeah. so i did spots wednesday and thursday and that was fun worked some shit out and then um then uh, i took united because jeff blue no longer flies into burlington i was yeah took united yeah. had to pay for a bag the check bag had to pay forty bucks each way. Furious. Um, out of uh, New York. New York. Oh wow, is nice. That's now, what I getting, hear. I hear it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's yeah. They have like comfy chairs. I'm like, oh, I wish I'd have gotten here earlier. Where to set up a comfy chair? <laughs> but um, getting there. Can you hear Charming? 
a little bit, but okay. uh, I, I, I wondered if you could hear Gordy. So don't worry about it. So getting there from Penn Station, I got I I, I wasn't thinking. One twenty fifth, I was I was on a C train, which is uh, local. I yeah. There, there's a train across the platform. I assume it's an A. It's not. It was the D. The D drops me off at Sixth Avenue. Now I gotta like roll two avenues. So those are the long ones right. to Eighth <laughs> Avenue to get to the with two bags, and uh, whatever. It's just like a lot of drama. And yeah. a lot of like, wow, it would be great if I was making more money and I just afford a cat just dragging bags up and down stairs because the fucking elevator is broken at 34th Street, as they always are, the escalator and all that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. A lot of shoulder pain this weekend, Jackie. A lot of dragging things upstairs, downstairs, rotator yeah. cuff shit. Yep. That is, um, here's my question. Because I got kicked off, I don't know where we are time-wise, Kyle. Oh, so we are about 30 in overall. Okay, so let's do Comic of the Week. Yeah, perfect. And you told me who the Comic of the Week is, Kyle. And I watched the clip, and it was funny. (laughs) Here, and I'll put it back in the chat again. Oh, that's right. It's Selma Zaki. And that might not be pronounced correctly, but it might be Zaki, but I'd go Zaki. Selma, do me a favor. Email me, Jackie at Jackie Cation, with a phonetic saying if I've said it wrong or congratulations if I've said it correctly. You guys, I watched her do stand-up. It was very funny, and her name is Selma Zaki. S-A-L-M-A-Z-A-K-Y. Do I get any credit for sending the link? You acting like you discovered Oh, this was all Lori's thing, by the way. We're just coasting over it. auditions at your house, okay? I'm the one that fucking found her on Instagram and sent her it. So give me a little credit. Lori is really the one. You should totally email Lori at Lori Kilmar. No. (laughs) If you want to be a comic of the week. Um, Yeah, there's uh, there's so many women comics that are just so many comics that are really funny right now. And um, Salma Zaki is one of them, of course. Yes. And so we're never going to run out of comics of the week who happen to be women. Yeah, just. What since 2015? That's been our brand. 16 something. 15. I think that's 15. Our, no, yeah, we started 15? at the very end of 15. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Uh, yeah. So it turns out we're nowhere near running out. So good for us. And no, we uh, got a couple more on deck. They, on deck, you guys. Yeah. So Jackie, more. My, did I tell you? Okay, so uh, I had things go viral, right? Two weeks yeah. ago, I was at about 13,000 Instagram, and now I'm yeah. close to 34. There you go. That's what we're talking about. Extra 20 grand. Yeah. I mean, it's not still not the numbers that, like, the average feature seems to have. <laughs> but, <laughs> <Ouch>. <laughs> well, well, seriously, I mean, I, there's, I'm having comics that are opening for me that have, like, 70, 80 accounts. It's no big deal whatever right uh, so yeah there's still more to be done but now i'm in a good clip cutting rotation you know i've kind yep. of got my vibe i guess and i'm, uh, bo- I'm bored i've actually because yeah. i put so much effort into it for about a month and a half yeah and i was doing it instagram don't forget to download when the caption fix the captions don't forget to fix the captions your name is spelled incorrectly jackie and uh so i fix the <laughs> captions and then i download it before it becomes instagram property and then when it's done downloading i take it i make it into reels over on facebook and then i take that same and i go over to tiktok right. and i copy yes. and paste and then i was going yeah. to youtube shorts yeah. and uh it all gets stalled it all gets stalled uh yeah everywhere i'm bored I understand. i'm bored with doing it and yes. um but i have in the last month gotten 400 new followers and, and mine blew up and then it slowed down like right now yeah this isn't i'm looking at my stats gonna look at my yeah. stats and um less than a million accounts reached in the last 90 days oh, God. Um, but mostly 94 percent non-followers that's that, good. Uh, well, I yeah. I can't see anything on your screen. No, it's uh, totally white. Uh, by the way, listeners, this is not what we want to do with our lives. <laughs> but we have right. to because that's the way the country is now, and the way comedy is now, and the way everything is now. Fucking sucks. 
You it's know a what? weird, yeah, it's a weird one. You know what Afira was saying? She's like, someone told her, what if you just do practice this experiment for a year? Don't write any jokes and just do marketing for yourself all day long just to see what happens. And I'm like, that would probably work. Uh, yeah. The only reason I do all the the marketing I do is so that I can tell jokes and write jokes. Um, right. Oh, I know. I mean, and you would, your brain would write jokes anyway, but I'm just like, if you, your if brain you, would write jokes. If anyway. you can rewrite, you can rewire, we can rewire our brains to go. This is our job now is to, is to work social media to get people to come to shows. Right. There was some guy on, um, the daily show who was blaming phones for, uh, raised suicide rates. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. How about the fact that we're living in the first two chapters of Watership Down? Huh? Anyone? <laughs> and uh, that comes up at least once every two months, you guys. It's time for Watership Down analogy. Just try to get people out there to read the Watership Down. Oh, I can't watch it. I have to read it. Ugh. Uh, no, you don't want to watch it. The, 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 the cartoon is super sad. It's pretty the, good, though. Right, but the book has uh, it has pathos and it's it's sad, but it's also triumph and amazing. It's really good. Jackie, do you know how long it takes me to read a novel? I'm still I read like I will I'm constantly reading a novel, but it's about seven to ten pages a night, and then I get sleepy, uh, which is good. Uh, I, I don't have insomnia, but uh, um, except when I right. have a flight the next morning, then I can right. sleep. I will say I'm reading um, Dorothy Sayers. Is that? the right name she's a, a mystery writer from um the 1920s uh british yeah. and she created like it's funny when sherlock holmes blew up when arthur conan doyle wrote sherlock holmes everybody started writing mystery novels and this woman i guess created um like a, a hobbyist a guy named lord peter whimsy and i've been reading this novel and it's not long and it's not hard to read, but the writing style is different in the early 1900s. Like there's better grammar and punctuation. And I'm just like, okay, make sure you get what's being said because there's, there's clues. It's no Thursday murder club, which by the way, every chapter is like two pages <laughs> and, uh, and, that's, and that's Ste how I write books. <laughs> well, and Steven Spielberg optioned it and Helen Mirren, uh, it's going to be in it, supposedly, oh, cool. if she lives. It's about old people solving crimes. Well, I hope she lives, Jackie. I mean, what a caveat. <laughs> um, I am reading Violetta by Isabella Allende. And um, it's, uh, it, she doesn't identify, it, she doesn't identify the country. Uh, it sounds like it's Chile. Could be, it's got a little mix of Chile and Argentina. I think it's Chile, but she never says it. But it's it kind of follows a family uh, from before uh, financial ruin, like right before the depression, the collapse, and now the family rebounds, and all it, while the government becomes quite oppressive, and how they get through it, it's really good. Um, and I fiction, it. it is fiction. Yes, it awesome. obviously takes a, a lot of inspiration from actual events. With right, the, right, historical fiction, we yeah, call it. I guess I've been so. trying to I've been trying to get through Bridgerton. And um, mm -hmm. there's four episodes, taking a break, going to release four more. Uh, here's the scoop. Yeah. Uh, I, Chris doesn't like it. My mother-in-law. Uh-oh. See, she so, plants herself in front of the TV. So if she doesn't like a show, uh, there's trouble on that household. Right. Well, then she, so she gets up and goes to bed. And, um, and all I want to oh. say is I th sat through. I, I walked through this room while you watched <laughs> hundreds of episodes of Young Sheldon. Please do not <laughs> challenge me. Have you considered, because I did this and it was a game changer, getting a gigantic television for her bedroom? She has one. Oh. She likes she will to be not. out with you guys? Okay. Yes. My mom holed up in there and watched Bosch all day long. <laughs> She, uh, I, she's the Chris is the reason I've seen a lot of Tracker. So <laughs> I remember I, I was uh, complaining to Dan Saint Germain about my mom, and I'm like, all she does is lay around and watch Netflix, and he's like, she's killing it. 
Fantastic. I'm like, hey, I <laughs> Dan Saint Germain. Um, I am I just almost finished rewatching The Sympathizer. Um, it's on Max and it's uh it's incredible. It did I talk about this last week? No. Oh my god. It's about a a um it takes place during the Vietnam War and after. And it's about a Viet Cong spy who is working for a general who is comically incompetent and annoying um, for uh, the, South Viet- the South Vietnamese army and how they get out of Vietnam and how he's still spying on him and it's in America and sending reports back to Hanoi. And, uh, he is so fucking fine and it's incredibly agent appropriate and I understand that and I'm allowed to watch it anyway. Robert Downey Jr. plays five different roles, and he's so good in all of them. I didn't realize till they were all seated at one table. I'm like, wait, those are all Robert Downey Jr. Man, I'm like, I gotta go back and rewatch everything because I didn't realize they were all him. Wow, it's incredible. Um, I recommend it, and I hardly see any advertising for it. It drives me nuts. Well, I saw Furiosa today. Ooh. Um. Because it was date day, we uh, we uh, hired a person, yeah, and um, and and Andy and I um went to first of all we went to Balboa Lake and did the swans. <laughs> pedal I don't know swans. What that... Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. The, those yeah, pedal right, right, boats right. that look like yes. swans. Yeah, I it's... saw them. I went for a bike ride. I have a bike. And uh, and was introduced like to Lake Balboa. I do like it. It's very scary to ride a bike in Los Angeles. But uh, Andy's yeah. buddy Kevin is uh, is a like amazing bike guy, and so he has taken me on two trips and shown me how to get to the bike path essentially. Nice. Cool. And um, and one of them was to Balboa Park, and I was like, "Has this been here the whole time? <laughs> I've lived in Los oh, Angeles no. <laughs> forever." And he's like, "The whole time, Jack." The whole time. <laughs> and uh and i saw the swans and i laughed and laughed and i was like i kind of want to do this with andy and andy's like we'll do it at sunset it'll be the most romantic well have you ever sat on a bicycle at a gym yes that's what it was uh, uh but there was a nice breeze and you were on the water and if you stopped pedaling you there was no way to get back to the shore so uh <laughs> So we we probably lasted forty five minutes. It was twelve dollars for an hour, which is enormous. I think it's so cheap because they're like nobody's doing this. Cheap. Yeah, it's twelve dollars per person per hour, and um, the reason it's twelve dollars is because you're not going to last an hour. You're going to be like a half an hour out there going. Yeah, I'm kind of done. Let's walk around this lake. What do you think about that? Let's go find a horchata from uh, the guy selling cut up watermelon with chili on top of it. And um, so uh, and then we we went and saw Furiosa mm-hmm. and then the Swans. And then we went to dinner at an amazing restaurant that was uh, that we ended up just, you know how strip malls are magical. Strip malls were created and people mocked them and they said that they were the bane of existence. But let me stand up for Los Angeles and the strip mall and just tell you people that the you much like the native Americans and the Buffalo, I like to use all parts of a strip mall. Mm-hmm. I go in, I find one part of a strip mall and I'm like, I'm willing to try all of it. I'll get my nails done. I might get a Hollywood tan. You don't know. And, but we went in and we found a new strip mall over by Seaside, California um, state university, Northridge. And, um, it was, get this, halal, but Pakistani and Afghani and something else. <laughs> and so we went in and had the most amazing, so it had vegetarian, vegan stuff, and mm-hmm. then it had meaty meat meat. Uh, you know what it didn't have? Any dairy. That's not true. We had lassi. Wait a minute. They said it was halal. Well, it probably wasn't cooked with it. Anyway, but... um. But it was delicious. And then I got home. Jackie. Okay. Yeah. And I spaced the fact that we were meeting at nine o'clock. And that's why oh, I was late. Oh, okay. We thought and you were on is... stage. I was like, if she was driving, she would definitely text us. 
Jackie, uh, <laughs> watermelon. Uh, you were correct. Yes. And chili will never be in my mouth at the same time. That's because uh, would... your taste buds were shot off in the Franco-American War by Chef Boyardee. Oh my God. Uh, Chef Boyardee, that is, that is, you're going way back for a reference. Uh, that, <laughs> that is that, something that I Andy says, see, and it's now mine. <laughs> I can see um, Johnny Carson saying Chef Boyardee and then raising himself on his toes for a second while he says it. That's how old that reference is. With a with a with a with a finger up. Maybe. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It would, yep. it would it would it would be toes Chef up and, and a finger. <laughs> Don't forget the finger. Um, um yeah. Do that, that strip mall thing, is that a joke? Is that a bit you were doing? No, but it ought to be because it it's um good. uh I'm loath to I okay, here's the other thing I watched. I'm loath to mention any Native American things. I was watching Top Chef Wisconsin because my sister said that one of the episodes took place in our hometown, South Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Did tell, you did tell me this last week. Okay. Well, the previous episode was Native American cuisine. And um, I think I just needed, I, if I were to talk about using all the parts of, an, of the strip mall, I might want to use a more generic reference instead oh, not of- that, yeah. not that metaphor? Not that metaphor, even though it is famously known that the American Native Americans used all the parts of the buffalo, which was why they were super sad when Whitey right. Magoo's just shot them yes. for their hides and let their bodies rot. Yes. Well, why not? Um, you could use that phrase and then talk talk about how you feel about using it as a white. I mean, it's interesting to, you know. Yeah. Say why you felt why you had reluctance to use it because I think most people wouldn't even think twice about using a metaphor they like, you know, or it, that makes sense, you know. Well, I might do it, or I might start a podcast where I talk about these internal mechanisms in stand up comedy. Oh, and uh, with yeah. a fellow female <laughs> comic, with a fel fellow comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to play the part of that fellow comedian? Uh, yes. No. And, no. <laughs> uh, I also did the club T he 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 T G. Oh yeah, T I love that one. It's yes, so great. It's, and it's on York. Got, right, I got to see uh Reggie Watts. Oh. And uh that was super oh. fun. Yeah. And I got to work on a bunch of uh a bunch of new stuff. Here's what I have to do before I go on the road. Write my set list. I yes. need the long set list again because I have been home for I think five weeks. That's nuts. by the way, financially, that's not ideal. No, but, it's awful. No. Yeah. Um right. but but I have uh, done a lot of ten minute sets and so there's that. And, Here's what I'm, uh, I'm so praying. I got to work on a lot of new stuff. Yeah. That's great. I am praying so my sound exchange, none of the the bits from Cisco Grief Club had been attributed to me yet. So I entered the data and I'm hoping okay. there's a chunk of change waiting for me because, uh, yeah, I've, yeah. I've gotten no money from it and I've gotten no money from Corset and there's just like two really old albums and one of them is about my dad. So it's, it's like slim picket everywhere. Every possible revenue stream I thought I would have post on is not yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's not revenue. Right. It's alone. Right. Everything else uh, is whatever. Yep. It is. Uh, yeah, it's what it is, I guess. But yeah, going out and just uh, kind of grinding it out. I think mm -hmm. I picked up a bunch of work. I don't know where we're at, but I kind of want to tell you. Uh, where are we're we? We're in Kyle? second break territory. Well, let's take a second break, shall we? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so do we have like 15 minutes left? Kyle? Basically, yeah. I think we had like, didn't we it's closer get to, to like 10? <laughs> we're 40 minutes in this. No, was this 10. is the podcast where we discuss about how long we've done. There was 10 in the first one. We're 40 yeah. here. So we're about 10, 15 away. So that's 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired I was say, and I gotta have, wake up. Have in we three agreed hours. to these terms? 
<laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So, like, after I do this Milwaukee run, which ends yeah. in Madison, mm-hmm. um, the next week I I just have I have a couple of sets around town, but after after that I go to Helium with Maria, and we're flying in day of. So the weekend of the twenty seventh of June, I'm, and then the weekend after that is the fourth of July. And then I'm doing Bloomington and Bloomington in July, the 12th and 13th. And then I'm doing San Francisco right before my birthday. And on your birthday, Mm -hmm. I'm doing punchline the 19th. I'm doing the Portland siren theater. So if you come and see me open for Maria at at helium at the end of this month, please come and see me at the Portland siren theater uh, the day before my birthday. And then uh, I'm doing a Don't Tell in Eugene, Oregon on the 20th. And on the 21st, I'm doing um, I'm doing the, the Eugene Club, just a Sunday. And, or is it, yeah, I think it's the Sunday, the 21st, I'm doing it. And then I'm home. Do I have anything for August? I don't think I do. Do you have anything for August? I have one week in August in Bloomington. Um, in July, I'm, uh, doing the deaf puppy, uh, in Manteca. Oh, right, the new, right, right. Yeah. Um, on it's the in between Stockton and, and Modesto and no, I'm not going to say that, but, uh, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to doing it. The guy told me he was going to offer me a week, but I have, I've yet to get it. So what yeah, are you doing? Can I August? finish saying my dates, Jackie, before <laughs> you start riffing on, on cities along the I-5 for fuck's sake? Or actually 99. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 26. that's actually, it's a, it's a 99 or the 65. I can't yeah, remember. No. <laughs> 26 and 27th. The Tuesday before that, which is 2022, 20, I think, um, I will be at um, uh, um, uh, Throck, the Throck Morton in uh, oh, nice. Santa Fe. And uh, the 20th, which is the Saturday before that, I will be in San Leandro doing that uh, outdoor park. And every year, Brian Copeland keeps. I'm like, it's so many, and I, I get to be outside in a park. I'll do it. Um, All right. Yeah. So that's my July. Besides going to Europe for uh, negative oh, right. money. Right, yeah. right. But you're gonna go for like a week. Do you think or? No, I I have a couple. I have, a, I have two solid dates: the sixth and seventh in Luxembourg, and then possibly a date in Paris, and then. I, I, I'm pretty open. Like I, I can go there earlier and maybe do other shows earlier or later, and you know maybe be there for like a week and a half. I, um, I'll be flying out of New York, so it'll be it won't be like a 15 hour flight from LA. It'll be about Eight. seven hours or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's not horrendous. That's um, easy. Yeah, yeah. So it's annoying. It's just at the point where you're like, why? Is this when still is this happening? Flight ending. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I um tentative, but I think it's a go. Uh, I'm gonna get to play Louisiana, and I've never played Eight. Louisiana. And so Which I'm gonna. I, I think I'm working with Jen Cober at uh, a casino in New Orleans. Oh, cool! Nice. Oh, yeah. New Orleans. Too. That's in July too. So yeah, um, I love it. Yeah. So that I'm looking forward to that, and I'm hoping. Yeah that that's supposed to. But I've never been to Louisiana, and I've certainly never been to uh, New Orleans. So hopefully they yeah, like Yeah, I me. mean, that goes without saying, Jackie. If you haven't been to Louisiana, then you haven't been to New Orleans. I mean, and Well, it's just New Orleans, and it's Louisiana and Hawaii. Those are the two. Oh, and the Virgin Islands. Oh, so That's the three. Hawaii. Some I've never Rose played Hawaii. Here was posting about going to Hawaii. There was a gig in Hawaii. Kermit Apio does it every I year. Do you know Hawaii. why? He's Hawaii. Yes. Would you? I did. Would one you if you were offered a ago. set? Oh, you did yeah. one. Years ago, we went to go spread my grandparents' ashes. I snuck a set in. You're goddamn right. Yes. <laughs> Kyle Clark, you guys. <laughs> Kyle Clark is rad. <laughs> was it at a like a? Was it a full time club? It there, was a. Was it uh, it was like a bar a... show. A guy ran a weekly that would do sort of a showcase and cycle people through. And it was a mix of like people like me who are kind of coming in for reasons, and then locals who would do a lot of like lassoing up people from from the resorts and stuff like that and convincing them to come out it was like a very specific form of barking that was pretty inspired wow 
Oh, you know, that reminds me. So when I, when I left um, the cellar, you know, there's like co- t- tons of comics because there's tons of clubs there. Right. And right. Um, this guy was barking. He's like, do you want to see a show? And I'm like, actually I'm a comedian. And then we started talking. <laughs> And I was like, that is, an, that is an opportunity you get a hundred times in New York. I'm I so know. surprised that you would ever, but sometimes you've got to be tempted. Yeah. Well, you don't, yeah, so I'm like, and I used to bark, you know, down around uh, Christopher street, you know, and it was really actually helped me get comfortable talking to New Yorkers, which is great. You don't want to just do it on stage. Right. So right. just talking, his name was Lucas Canelli or Kalini. I think it's Canelli. But he was saying, oh, he was the one that was telling me, he said, Instagram is getting oversaturated and a lot of people are making, doing well on YouTube. That's why I was thinking maybe if oh. I do put the whole setup, you know, that even though it's, it'll be five years old at this point, by the time I get it all cobbled together the way I like it, maybe that's something. I don't know. I mean, at least that'll, it'll have eight minute, uh, it, it'll be longer than eight minutes. So you can get some ad breaks in there and maybe if a lot of people watch it, maybe I can get some YouTube income. Right. You know? Right. I think I made $18 from Facebook. Yeah. It's ridiculous how much we're providing for them Mm -hmm. and how little they give us. Right. We are part of the people that are keeping other people on the app and people that aren't making stuff and we're not getting anything. And we're like, Mm. we're putting out real shit, like real stand up. We're not just like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. What, you know, what people are doing, whatever they're doing. Oh my God. This time in history for, uh, for artists, not that I, I hate, you know, saying, that, but it's just like, it's just, they're just chis- chiseling away at every possible opportunity to make money, to make a living, you know? Well, it's, so. it's just, there's a lot of people and there's, um, and there's, and because there's a lot more, I think it's, because when we were kids, I think there were only like 4 billion people on the planet. And now there's eight. So you take well, 2% of, of 4 mine. billion. Huh. Yes. <laughs> well, you're replacing well, it's yourself. it's the amount of people. It's the amount of hoarding of these companies and the amount they're not paying. They're, they have so much money and they're oh, not. the capitalist structure. You're right. Yes. 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 And That's, how, uh, I've decided uh, to call myself a red ragger. It's an old that? term from the twenties. Uh, it means communist. <laughs> and I'm like, man, what the heck? I'm actually more of a socialist. <laughs> I'm, I enjoy, ca- here's, here's a, here's a premise I've been working on, which is that uh-huh. I enjoy capitalism. I think we all, we can, we can discuss that at the merch table. And, uh-huh. uh, I love making the sale, but that doesn't mean that I don't like uh, socialism as well. Big fan, big fan. Even though uh, I am aged out of ever going, I never went to preschool. I did somehow still learn to share. (laughs) And, um, but uh, did you guys go to preschool? Yes. My mom was a preschool teacher and she taught at the school that I went to. uh, She taught later at that school, Pied Piper Preschool. Wow. It was Did awesome. anyone read that story? What <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> the Pied Piper came and stole all the children and killed them because oh. he had gotten rid of all the rats and they were supposed to pay them. And no, we, didn't, we didn't get in the yeah. weeds with all that, Jackie. <laughs> Nobody read the story. It's a short story. Right, Kyle? It's not a lot. It's pretty fast. But, I'll, like, you know, skip to the end. Miss Alice never read that to us and those were what a great those day. were my happiest days it all went downhill as soon as i transferred into kindergarten <laughs> well i do oh hey hey let's leave 